Good morning, church family. My name is Lynn Dossett. Welcome to worship. If you are a first-time guest with us today, please meet us in the narthex after worship for a special welcome gift. Now let's take a moment to offer a sign of Christ's peace to each other by a smile and a wave. Now let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship. in body or in spirit for our call to worship. Today's call to worship is a responsive reading. I will begin and you will respond with the word, words in bold. Praise the Lord. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Let's join in singing to our great God by singing hymn 64. Holy, 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 all verses. Thank you. 
Please remain standing as we profess our faith together by praying the Apostles' Creed, traditional version. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of the God Father Almighty. From thence he shall become the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, and the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. There's a peace I've come to know Though my heart and flesh may fail There's an anchor for my soul I can say it is well Jesus has overcome and the grave is overwhelmed the victory is won he is risen from the dead and i will rise when he calls my name no more sorrow no No more sorrow, no 
God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And I will rise when he calls my name. No more sorrow, no more pain. I will rise on eagle's wings before my God. Fall on my knees and cry. Thank you, Rosie. What a message. I don't even have to preach today. <laughs> so this is the time in our <laughs> it does, it does. So this is the time in our service when we pray um, pastoral prayer. Today you will see that we have these beautiful baby gowns up here that have been lovingly crafted by our butterfly stitches and our very own Ginny Deep who has been gone for such a long time but is back with us now. Praise God. Praise God. So we will be placing a blessing upon these gowns before they go um, off to wherever they go to, the hospitals and to our families who have premature babies or who, babies who have died. And so one of the things that I like to do, this is me, I like to touch things when I pray over them. And so I would like to invite you that if, if that's the way that you pray, if you like to do that too, I would invite you to come on up and pray with me and touch these gowns as we place blessings on them. If that's not your thing, I just ask for you to pray in your seats and extend your arm towards the gowns. So come on up. I, lo <laughs> I love it when lots and lots of people come up. I love it, I love it. Go ahead, make sure that everyone has some kind of touch on it. You know what, we can move these over a little bit. Let's make a little more room, and then we'll move them back. They moved them over here because they didn't want to, whoops, they didn't want to block, block the pulpit. Come on in, come on in. And if you can't reach the gowns, then you can just place your hand on the shoulder of someone who has a hand on their gowns. How about that? We'll just make like a love train. <laughs> Let us go to the Lord in prayer, friends. God, we are so thankful to have this opportunity this morning to pray together for a special request. Here in your holy sanctuary, we have these beautiful, beautiful blessing gown sets that have been so lovingly crafted by people in our church because they have compassion upon families who have had premature babies that are struggling or families that have lost their babies. God, we know that these babies who have died are already living peacefully with you in heaven. We know, God, that you have cradled them in your own arms and that you have helped guide them safely to you. We have no doubt, Lord, that they are with you and that they are being loved. They're the ones that are truly blessed but even when we know that, God, this is still so hard. We also ask that you bless the preemies that receive them. Touch them with your power and your strength. Help them to grow and thrive. Lord, have mercy upon these children. God, most of us cannot imagine what it is like to lose a child. Most of us cannot imagine the fear of having a baby that has been born way too early. Most of us cannot imagine the grief, the emptiness, the heart-wrenching sorrow and worry. But Lord, what we can imagine 
is the love and the mercy and the grace that you have already given to these parents. The love and grace and mercy that we also share signified by these beautiful, beautiful creations. May these gowns provide some sort of solace, some comfort to those who receive them. May they know, Lord, that every single stitch is a labor of love, a labor of love that has been provided by people that they don't even know. We pray, God, that this speaks volumes to who you are and to who we are in Christ. Thank you, God, for the willingness of those who made these to serve, to serve others and to serve you and your holy church. God bless their hands as they continue to carry on this mission of love. We love you, Lord, and we are thankful for your goodness and grace. And now we pray together the prayer of hope that you taught your disciples to pray so long ago and continues to teach these disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, friends, for helping me to bless those gowns and to bless those babies and their families. Now we're going to join together in singing hymn number 405, Seek Ye First. Quaker lady was once asked the secret of her beautiful complexion. And she said, I use truth for my lips, for my voice, prayer, for my eyes, pity, for my hands, charity, for my figure, uprightness, and for my heart, love. Her answer revealed a close and intimate relationship that she developed in spending time with God. We continue our series today on unlikely heroes, and we talk talking about a man in the Bible who is very well known. His name is David. Now we will discover, like the others before him, that he really didn't begin his life as the hero type. David was a, from a small, unimportant, sleepy little village called Bethlehem. He didn't have the privilege of being the oldest son of the family, which would have provided him much, much prestige and power. As the youngest of the family, David spent his time as a shepherd, spending most of his time alone with a bunch of smelly sheep, 
while his older brothers were fighting off the Philistine army with King Saul. And yet, this unlikely man, one of the least of these, moved from zero to hero because of an attribute that God looks for in all of us, and that is the attribute of character. The actual word for character in the Greek language originally was used in connection with those tools that are designed for engraving. And character is indeed a tool that marks us. In a sense, it cuts us, it shapes us, and it engraves us until we become the people that God wants us to be. Now, if you were to read David's life story, you would see a lot of ups and downs. David made some really good choices, but he also made some really bad choices. He had some really big bumps in his road. Now, I don't know what you think, but I have often thought to myself, how is David considered a man of character? I mean, there were so many times when he failed and he sinned against God. I mean, he had one of his own men killed so that he could have his wife. Now, how is that good character? Well, first, David was human, after all. He wasn't perfect. And secondly, the road to character often involves moments of moral crisis, confrontation, and recovery. And during all of these times in his life, first and foremost, David sought out God. There was nothing more important to David than his relationship with God, so much so that God declared David to be a man after his own heart. This is David's superhero attribute that made him a man of character. And this is the reason why David stands out as the greatest king in Israel's history. Now I find in scripture three reasons that made David a man of character. So first, friends, he waited on God. David began his life in such simple circumstances that it makes you wonder how he would even ever have been noticed. It's not like he was part of a social club. He wasn't on the internet. I mean, there was no way that a lot of people could know him. But in spite of being left alone, physically and relationally, apparently he was known as the runt of the family. He was also known as an afterthought. David's time watching sheep in the wilderness was very profound for David. His character that couldn't be seen by others had been formed through David's encounters with God in the wilderness. Now while the smells and sounds of tending sheep has the potential to drive someone else bonkers, David found that this was the perfect venue in which to place all things with his God and to discover the peace that only God can give. It was there where he could lay down all of his burdens and allow God to pick them up. It was there that he sang praises to the one who created him. It was there that he learned just who his God was. It is where he was cut and shaped and etched by God. David learned to let God develop his character. No one else, just God. When David was anointed by Samuel as king, David could have easily commandeered Saul's authority and taken over the kingdom, but he waited on God to do so in God's timing. Now, why is this so important? Because this time in the wilderness with God alone helped build his character. 
understanding and knowing God more intimately draws us closer to him and it refines us to become more like him when we wait on him to develop our character. The many Psalms that were written by David project a life of waiting on God and of a growing intimacy with him. David had a heart that was always pointed toward God. In Psalm 25, David said, May integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait for you. How are you building your character today? Are you letting God cut and etch and shape you? You know, I couldn't help but think about all of the self-help books that are out there. Our society spends millions of dollars on them every year. And now I'm not dissing self-help books because in a sense they're good things. Because the people that are buying them, it means that they are searching to develop better character. However, friends, character is not built by reading books or watching television, or staying busy in the many activities that are always presented to us. Rather, our character is perfected through a close, personal relationship with God as we learn to wait on Him to develop it. Now another reason why David was a man of character was because he followed God's will. Now, when the people wanted a king, remember we were going, we were, yes, last week, not yesterday, we weren't here yesterday. Last week, we talked about all of the judges, all of the judges that, we, that, the, that the Israelites had. They still needed a king. The judges just weren't quite working out the way that, we, that, that they were hoping. So the people wanted a king. So they kept asking God for a king. So God gave them one. Now, God always knew that he would give people a king. It had been prophesied that the kingdom of God would be established through Israel. But the people's relentless demand for one caused God to finally give them what they wanted, a king of their choosing. So God chose to give them Saul. Now Saul was never intended to be the one to be king because he was from a different tribe. He was from the tribe of Benjamin. Prophecy said that the king would come through the tribe of Judah. So Saul was the people's choice and even though God knew the character of Saul, he allowed him to serve as king for a time. But Saul had one major character flaw. He was disobedient. This is exactly what the high priest Samuel told him in 1 Samuel chapter 13, verses 14 through 15. I didn't give him much warning. Let me just read it. Oh, here it is. So this is Samuel talking to King Saul. But now, because now Saul's been disobe disobedient, okay? God, Saul's not listening to God. So Samuel says, well, now your kingdom won't endure. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart and appointed him ruler of his people because you have not kept the Lord's command. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Okay, so this is the problem with Saul, but David, on the other hand, God knew had the kind of character that he wanted. According to Acts 13.22, it says, After removing Saul, he made David their king, and God testified concerning him, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. We keep hearing that over and over again. There is something to that, friends. He will do everything I want him to do. 
Again, this is the word of God for the people of God. So David, in contrast to Saul, was a man who was willing to be obedient to the will of God. And this was the trait that truly showed him to be a man of character. David learned to obey from a very early age. He obediently kept his father's flock. He dutifully took food to his soldier brothers at the battlefield. He tried to obey his king Saul when Saul told him that he needed armor on to fight Goliath, only to realize that it wasn't the tools that he needed. Submissively, he played his lyre for the king. He obeyed him further by fighting and defeating Israel's enemies. And as king of Israel, David had complete willingness to follow God. Before any major engagements, he always sought out God's will first. Unlike his predecessor Saul, David desired to be obedient and to do as the Lord commanded him. What about you? Do you obey God's will for your life? Or is this a place where you might need to be cut and shaped a little? God desires people of character who are true to their word and will do whatever he wills them to do. May we pray to God to help us to be those kinds of people. A third reason that David was a man of character was that he repented in his failures. Even though David exhibited great character much of his life, remember the road to character often involves moments of moral crisis and confrontation and recovery. David suffered a moral crisis when he began a relationship with Bathsheba and then went a step further and had her husband killed. When God sent Nathan to confront him and oh God sent Nathan to confront him and he sent him to rebuke him and he could have fought with Nathan he could have denied it he could have done all sorts of things but this is not what David did in his time of failure David's good character showed these things a repentant heart and a sorrowful spirit. He had already been condemning himself, himself for his actions even before God sent the prophet Nathan to him. And ultimately David's repentant heart and sorrowful spirit led to his recovery. I am sure that there were times when David knew the mistakenness of his actions even as he committed them, turning away from God as he committed them. But then he immediately repented, meaning he immediately turned back towards his God. And this demonstrated not only his character, but also his love for God because he was a man that was always after God's own heart. In Psalm 51, in his Psalm of Confession of This Sin, David writes this, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart that you, God, will not despise. And David received God's forgiveness 
And then he wrote this psalm in which he proclaimed, Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. He said, I acknowledged my sin to you, and I didn't cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Friends, true character is revealed as much in our own failures and how we respond to them as it is in everyday life. As God's people, we must repent of our sins and we must find God's forgiveness in the process revealing, like David, our character, even in failure. What is the content of your character? Do you have a beautiful com complexion like that Quaker lady had? Do you use truth for your lips? Do you use prayer for your, oh, prayer for your lips. Oh, that's not right. Hold on. Let me go back. Do you use truth for your lips? Do you use your voice for prayer? Do you show pity with your eyes? For your hands, charity. For your figure, do you demonstrate uprightness? And for your heart, do you show love? Do you wait on God? allowing him to shape you into the person that he desires? Are you willing to do whatever God wills for your life? Have you ever experienced a moral crisis? Has it kept you from a deeper relationship with God? Or have you sought forgiveness for your sins through repentance and sorrow? Does your character shine through every aspect of your life, even in your failures? You know, in today's world, it is sometimes difficult to stand up for what is right and to exhibit good character. Yet that is precisely what we are called by God to do. As Christians, our character is especially important, for our character is not only who we are, but it represents that of Christ, who is our example. It represents who we are in Christ. Our character must reflect the, the, that of Christ as redeemed members of God's family. If Christians are not known for their good character, friends, then how are we different from anybody else? The content of our character is seen every single day that we live. So the question is, what do others see? Remember, friends, that somebody is looking towards you as an unlikely hero. May they see the godly character that God not only requires of us, but also desires of us. So we're going to close today together with a prayer. You should have one of these. It was in your bulletin. Does everyone have one of these? This is the prayer from Psalm 51 that David prayed to God. And so today we're going to take a moment together to ask, to, to ask for God's forgiveness, 
to ask for God to renew a right spirit in us and for God to be with us in our times of life. Everybody got it? Let's pray. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart you, God, will not despise. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Prayer for the giving of our tithes and offerings. For our online friends, there are three ways you can give that you will see on the screen in front of you. For our friends here, along with your offering, please make sure you place your Connect card that tells us that you were here today and your salty service card that tells us that you served Jesus outside for at least an hour this week.
Let us pray together. O oh God, you call us to love you with all our soul, mind, and strength. Help us to make lifestyle decisions that will honor you and all that you are. May these gifts provide ministries of your love and compassion to all. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. follower I would be for by his hand he leadeth me this is how good great character is developed right here those words right there right there <laughs> take a picture with your cell phone while it's still up oh no <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Take a picture with your cell phone and look at this every day. Take, take your, and then pray your prayer from Psalm 51. Take this home with you. Pray this prayer every single day. God will lead you. He might cut, it might cut a little. It might, it might hurt a little when you're being shaped and molded and etched. That doesn't sound like fun at all. But he will continue to use you to serve him and to serve, serve his world and to serve his people with a better character than you've ever had before. 
I truly believe. We are, oftentimes we think, oh, well, I have good character. But you know, we're all still works in progress. We all have work to do, and God will do that work in us if we allow him to. So who came to dinner last night? Was that fun? Did you have fun? I want to thank Kelly and everybody else in this room who had a part um, in, in preparing for that meal last night. It was an absolutely wonderful meal. It was delicious food. It was great fellowship. The Cypress Creek Jazz Band played some music for us for over an hour, well over an hour. Um, and they appreciated being there, uh, allowing our venue to have a rehearsal for their um, concert that's coming up at Carrollwood. Uh, Cultural Center, November the 2nd. Um, so they kind of used our, used that last night as a rehearsal for them. And it was just, it was very casual and just it was a lot of fun. Not a whole lot of people danced though. I was really disappointed in that. And my husband wouldn't let me dance because of my knee. He's like, you are not ready to dance yet. So anyway, but it was a lot of fun, friends. So next time we have another community dinner, I would encourage each and every one of you to attend. Um, we are still selling t-shirts back there in the back. I will be back there for a few minutes if you um, want to purchase a t-shirt. I know that we have been in the position where you had to prepay. We only have, we're going to um, end the sale at the end of this month, so we don't have a lot of time left. So if you want to, if you don't have money today and you want to go ahead and place an order, let's go ahead and do that. I will be back there in the back. Um, have I forgotten anything, Miss Mary? We got a church conference coming up. Oh, annual con, or not annual conference, charge conference. Woohoo! Raise your hand if you love charge conference. <laughs> <laughs> it is a charge conference is one of those necessary evils <laughs> but it is doing the business of the church and it is important and we are going to have a potluck and you know we love food so uh, make sure you mark your calendar for that may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you may the lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace and the time to spend with God to develop your character. Amen.